Good morning. Um, it's a, quite a shift to go from uh, what Eric was talking about to this, but on the other hand, I think the human face is uh, really what uh, I'll be talking about, uh, but with a background of numbers. Uh, the timing of this talk on culture, perception, and trust uh, is, is actually good. Um, uh, last week or, or so, we launched a major global study. We've been monitoring public trust in, in vaccination and confidence uh, for the last decade, but in the last five years have developed a confidence index to try to get some measure of this messy emotional sentiment space uh, that we know has a tremendous effect on people's trust and willingness to take vaccines. Um, this was a, um, an image created by the Financial Times, uh, drawing from our data, but as you can see, the spectrum of countries uh, on the safety versus uh, effectiveness perceptions is quite varied. Um, we, sorry, just getting my clicker here. Um, we looked in this uh, paper in The Lancet uh, on the, um, let's see, the clicker is not working. Um, sorry, there we go. Um, the transition, we looked in 149 countries, nearly 150 countries, about 280,000 people around the world responding to uh, the confidence index between 2015 and 2018, 2019. Uh, these particular capture those three years just to see how their sentiments are changing. One thing we've seen is that people's feelings about vaccines have become far more volatile. It's a lot more like political opinion polling. Uh, they used to be much more stable 10, 20 years ago. You knew who agreed and who was less uh, confident around vaccines, but that's changing very frequently. Uh, the overall picture is that we see that there is a a general trend um, where people are becoming a little bit more confident than they were five years ago. I think that's partly because there was a bit of a wake-up call to the world that actually we are starting to lose confidence. So there have been more uh, proactive efforts. We look at confidence in the importance, the effectiveness, and the safety of vaccines. Um, these first two are about importance and effectiveness. Where we tend to be more stuck um, is, oops, let's see, is in safety, but I'm going to jump ahead to uh, the global picture of this. Basically, these sentiments go up and down. The overall trend is getting a little bit better, but we do see that uh, Europe remains the, the lowest in confidence, the most skeptical, with uh, countries like Lithuania, only 19% strongly believing that vaccines are safe. The highest is Finland at 66%, and that's just strongly believed. Poland actually had the most significant drop in confidence in vaccines, while countries like Indonesia had the worst drops in confidence um, in the period we were monitoring. Now, these are mixed. The other ones that were the lowest in our most recent global surveys were Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Nigeria, Pakistan, Serbia, countries where local and geopolitical tensions are surrounding um, and influencing people's trust in authorities, trust in who's giving and, and managing vaccine programs, and an element of extremism, uh, sometimes religious, sometimes other, other ethnic tensions. Uh, the drop in Indonesia was very much driven by uh, a Muslim sentiment that the vaccines uh, were not um, safe from the Muslim perspective because of certain gelatin porcine in some vaccines. So when religion comes up against scientific evidence, that's a hard one. You can't really uh, address um a religious belief with a scientific fact. They just don't uh, have, they're very different sentiments. So we need to find ways to humanize and make 
the reasons for accepting a vaccine more relevant. Um, add to these this background of sentiment and all these uh, these maps I've been showing you is really um, a vaccine confidence in a time before COVID. And now we have this uh, hyper uncertain environment, uh, anxieties about the, uh, an emerging possibility of a vaccine. And we're increasingly adding to our confidence index questions about the COVID vaccine. Uh, as you can see, uh, the dark blue is strongly, uh, pretty confidently agreeing they would take a vaccine uh, if for co against COVID, and the top, uh, the orange and the gray, is less confident. Now, the overall picture is not that bad, but the um, the smaller sentiments, uh, the sorry, the smaller bars which reflect negativity and disagreement about acceptance can be the tipping point phenomena. You can have a good amount of the population going to take the vaccine, but that little difference, that swing vote, if you think of it in term, political terms, can make the difference of getting to herd immunity or not. So it does make a difference, even if it is a small segment of the population that says, no, thank you. I don't trust it. I don't believe it. It's not compatible with my religious beliefs. So we need to understand and find out other ways besides scientific evidence that when people are refusing vaccines for cultural, political, religious reasons, that throwing facts at the issue is not going to change the picture. We need new ways to um, embed and, and have those discussions. Now, those are the numbers. But the other thing that we look at and listen to and watch in the Vaccine Confidence Project um, are the faces, the human emotions, the sentiments that um, we're seeing. Now, I'm just going to run through a number of slides. These are images to capture the thing we never forget every day in the Vaccine Confidence Project. As much as we spend time on the big numbers, we remind ourselves of the emotions of publics, of young girls after an HPV vaccine who got scared and are convinced there's an issue with it. These are girls in Denmark, um, those that was Colombia. This is Denmark. This is Ireland. This is Japan. These are young girls around the world through YouTube, through other ways, are sharing images with each other saying, this HPV vaccine, it gave me all these reactions. Now, a lot of this is being investigated. Um, we consistently have uh, scientific data that uh, there is no specific link with the vaccine and the reactions, but the experience of the vaccination has created an anxiety reaction in many of these cases. We still need to deal with that and, not, and help that and have empathy with the girls' reactions and not just focus on the specific scientific evidence of whether the vaccine was related or not. We need to think about the person. We need to think about the girls, their mothers, and others. That human face that Eric Topol just talked about, we need to put the human together with the scientific and technological advances. And this is not just a Western phenomena, uh, uh, something that is a luxury to be able to complain about something you, you have. This is around the world. We are seeing it in different um, places. And I just, as I mentioned in our global study, we see at a national level. This may seem like, oh, this is a handful of people on the steps of some stairs in, uh, in Indonesia. But in our global study, where we did a nationally representative sample of the country, Indonesia had the biggest drop in confidence in the world. So this is not just a small group of people complaining. This is having a national knock-on effect. So we need to see what's behind, what's driving that knock-on effect, both at a human and personal level, and what is the what is what are the bigger numbers that are being uh, affected? 
we also have a um a strong sense of you know we need to go back to the natural the green are vaccines uh, the veggies not vaccines um and medical tyranny the sense of it's being forced on me we hear a number of these same sentiments as we're building up and preparing for a covid vaccine um there's a lot of these same sentiments they're re repurposing themselves around a, a potential vaccine for a global pandemic that we absolutely need to get ahead of to liberate us not to contain us to liberate us to go back to a life of so a social life a family life a work life um a, a, an economy that can support rather than divide and create further inequities um but instead some people in the in the public health world and immunization world said well fine we have such a bad virus that's having such a bad impact on the world maybe it will change the mind of people who are agitating against vaccines. It's actually sadly been the opposite because of the hyper uncertainty, because of the, the whole environment um, of uh, trust and distrust around um, the COVID vaccine. There are groups that have gotten together to uh, resist even the COVID vaccine, which actually, uh, instead of uh, being a lockdown, as I said, could have a liberating effect. So we are following these two and they've joined up with other groups. So we can't, a top-down approach is no solution to this, making something a mandate when that's one of the biggest things that is the resistance factor. We need other ways. We need other um, uh, human ways and working with local groups to uh, build some confidence around the COVID vaccine. And I just, uh, this is my last slide. I, I've just published a book this past month. It'll be out in the UK next month. Uh, it's called Stuck. And, and it's on the one hand stuck like in a needle and at the same time stuck in the conversation. Um, and we have a, a, a growing tension between all the fantastic big data that can make a difference in understanding trends versus losing that human face. And in that sense, the kind of the conclusion of my points, which very much resonate with Eric's in the sense of we need to bring together the, the scientific and technological um, advances that are so valuable and not lose the human face, but bring that back together. Um, this isn't just a misinformation problem. This is a, a, a relationship problem. And this is a cultural revolution saying we need to change. We need to get back to a more human face um, in the scientific and medical field. Thank you.